And I preach this morning in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is a stressful season, isn't it? I mean, even with things beginning to loosen up now, yet even as things are loosening up, even as the restrictions are loosening up, if anything, the pressure is building up as we all try to figure out together what the new normal will be, what our new lives will look like. And there's a lot riding on what happens just in these next few weeks, whether businesses will make it or not, whether our jobs will be there or not, whether the economy will come back or not how to hold and celebrate high school and college graduations. And for those of you with kids, how to have a summer break with the kids when you basically just had a summer break with the kids, right? <laughs> this is a stressful season. And stress can bring out the best or the worst in people. It can drive people toward God or away from God. And if there's one person in the Bible who knows a thing or two about stress, it's the Apostle Peter, the, letter of, uh, the author of our letter today. The Apostle Peter who had to learn the hard way that the best way to handle stress is with open hands and fixed feet. Open hands toward God, fixed feet against the devil. That's what the Apostle Peter tells us in our letter today. So let's take a look. Peter writes and he says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all of your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. And Peter knows what he is writing about, not only from his own life, his own experience, as we'll see in just a few moments, but also from the Bible itself. This phrase here that Peter uses, the mighty hand of God, Undoubtedly, this phrase refers to the Exodus. When God redeemed his people from slavery in Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, God's mighty hand was upon the Hebrews to redeem them for good, and God's mighty hand was upon the Hebrews for better, to lead them out of Egypt through the wilderness and into the promised land, only the problem was the Hebrews didn't want to be led. The Hebrews didn't want to enter the good land that the Lord God was leading. For 40 years, God humbled you in the wilderness, allowing you to hunger and then feeding you with the manna so that you might learn. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. For 40 years, the mighty hand of God was upon the Hebrews in the wilderness to humble them, teaching them to trust and obey. And God's mighty hand was upon the Apostle Peter, too, at the Last Supper, and for much the same reason, teaching Peter to be humble, to trust and obey. At the Last Supper, Jesus said to his apostles, he said, truly, truly, I say to you, all of you, all of you will fall away because of me this night. Now, the 11 other apostles were shocked and horrified and scandalized, but Peter dismissed it with an air of bravado. He said, Lord, even if, even if I have to die for you, I will not deny you. To which Jesus replied, you will deny me three times. And so he did. That night, Peter was humbled in front of the 11 other apostles, humbled in front of three different groups of people, humbled in his own eyes, humbled to the point when Peter broke down and wept. But once he was humbled, then Peter learned to trust and obey. Because there at the Last Supper, Jesus had also said to him, Peter, Peter, Satan has demanded to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you, Peter, that when you have fallen, you will turn back and strengthen your brothers. And so you see, if there is anyone in the Bible who can say, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you, if there is anyone in the Bible who can say that surely it is Peter, And God cares for you too. For the mighty hand of God is upon us in this season of the coronavirus. Not that God caused 
the coronavirus and all that it goes along with it to happen, but rather that as with the wandering of the, the Hebrews in the wilderness, as with the long, dark, bitter night of Peter's struggle, God knew it would happen. God allowed it to happen. And God is using what is happening to humble us so that we might learn that though we have to live our lives, yet we are not in control of them. That there are powers and circumstances far beyond our reach, far beyond our grasp, with big government on the one hand and a small virus on the other, and that we have to learn to adjust our lives to these things, to live with them, to live under them as best as we can. God is using this season to humble us so that we too might learn to trust him and obey that even in this stressful season, even in this time of uncertainty, even in this unprecedented time of anxiety, yet God invites us. God cares for us and invites us to cast all of our anxiety upon him, not to hold on to it, not to hold on to it, but to, to cast it upon him. All of it, our fears, our worries, our anxieties, our frustrations, our misgivings, to take it out of our hands and put it into the hand of God, trusting that God's mighty hand is upon us to guide us through this wilderness, to lead us through this night, and obeying God when he says, give it to me, give it to me, and I'll take it. You know, there was a time in my life back in 2016 when I didn't know where I was going to go, where I was going to live, or what I was going to do. What I knew is that the door to my previous church in Ohio had shut, and two other doors I thought were open, one in Minnesota, one in Texas, those doors suddenly shut too, and there I was stuck in between in the wilderness, lost, with no opportunities and a family of eight to support. That was a scary time. And that was a humbling time. I mean, to be told by all these different churches that no, we don't want you, we reject you, that was a humbling time too. But it was a time that taught me to trust and obey. For in that time, in that season, day after day, week after week, I would pray to the Lord, God, I trust you. I trust you to provide for me and for my family. And so he did, opening up the door and bringing us here. And I know that some of you are going through a season like that right now, a stressful season, an uncertain season. When like the Hebrews wandering in the wilderness, you feel like you are, are lost and wandering and have no, no sense of direction, no sense of where to go. When like Peter, you feel like you're lonely and crying out in the night. When like me, you don't know what the future holds for you, for your family, for your job, for your business. When you don't know what to do, open up your hands and give it to him. Give all of it to him, the uncertainty, the fear, the anxiety, the frustration. Give all of it to him. Cast your anxieties upon the Lord because he cares for you. Take it out of your hands and put it into his. Trust him. Trust him with yourself. Trust him with your life. Cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you you. And that's a lesson that Peter had to learn the hard way on the Sea of Galilee. When the storm whipped up and Jesus was asleep on the cushion and Peter cried out to Jesus in fear and in anxiety, he said, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care that we are perishing? Yes, Peter, he cared. He stilled the storm and brought you safe to the other side. Yes, Peter, he cared. He reached down and grabbed hold of your hand and lifted you up when you were drowning. He cared for Peter and he cares for you. So do what Peter did. Do what Peter learned how to do the hard way. Do what Peter tells us. And in a time of stress, cast all of your anxiety upon him. Don't hold on to it, but approach it with open hands and with fixed feet. Peter writes, discipline yourselves, keep alert. For like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And oh, the irony, huh? or better yet, perhaps the, the prophecy of what Peter writes 
right here, like a roaring lion, the devil comes. Because recall that when Peter is writing this letter, Christians were not yet being fed to the lions. Now they would be in four, maybe five years. But when Peter sat down and put pen to paper, this was not yet a historical reality. This was just still a figure of speech, but it was one that Peter himself had learned the truth of the hard way in the Garden of Gethsemane. The night of the Last Supper, right, off, right after Jesus had humbled all of the apostles, right after Jesus had humbled Peter in front of all the apostles, Peter had another hard lesson to learn that night. Because Jesus led them out of the room from the Last Supper through the Kidron Valley to the Mount of Olives and to the Garden of Gethsemane, and then Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John to a secluded place in that garden. And then Jesus turned to them and said, Men, I need you. If there was ever an hour in my life when I needed you men, it is right now because my soul is troubled to the point of death. Please, stay here. Keep awake, keep alert, keep watch with me here while I go over there and pray. But Peter couldn't keep awake. Peter couldn't keep alert. Peter couldn't keep watch, not even for one hour. In the hour of Jesus' greatest need, in the hour of Jesus' trial, Peter fell into temptation, Peter fell asleep, and the devil came and snatched Jesus away to crucify him. Because you see, that's how the devil works. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls about looking for someone to devour. Huh? We've all seen the nature shows, haven't we? We all know how that works. The lions don't go after the strong. The lions don't go after the herd. No, the lions go after the weak. They go after the vulnerable. They go after those who are separated from the herd. And that's been all of us in this season of stress, in this season of shutdown. And that's me just about every single week. You see, Monday is my day off, which means that Monday is for me a day of, a day of spiritual attack because I'm a preacher. And I have found from experience that the better I preach on Sunday morning, the more you pay for it on Monday morning. Huh? The better you preach on Sunday, the more you pay for it on Monday because Sunday is the primary day of the week when I serve the Lord God. And so Monday, the devil comes prowling about looking for his pound of flesh. But I've also found this, that the devil is defeated. You see, the devil snatched Jesus away to crucify him, but Jesus wouldn't stay dead and crucified, would he? No, Jesus rose from the dead victorious. Jesus is alive, and Jesus is alive forevermore. The devil has no power over Jesus anymore. The devil has no power over those who belong to Jesus anymore. And if you belong to Jesus, if you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the devil cannot harm you. Because with Jesus by your side, calling out on Jesus' name, the devil has to flee from you and leave you alone. That's because, you see, that roaring lion is actually little more than a bully. He prowls about looking for weakness to prey on. He roars like a lion, hoping to scare you or to intimidate you into doing what he wants. The devil is little more than a bully, but Jesus is not just your brother. Jesus is your big brother. Jesus whipped the devil once, Jesus will whip the devil again, and with Jesus by your side, all fight goes out of the devil, and he slinks away. Which is why the apostle Peter tells us, resist him, firm in faith. Resist him. And I have learned from experience that what Peter tells us is 100% true, that when the devil comes prowling, don't run away from him. Stand your ground and stand firm in faith. Fix your feet, call on Jesus. And with Jesus by your side, the devil has to go away. Because if you try anything else, well, remember that roaring lion is also a, a lying serpent. And if you let him get into your head, if you let him get into your heart, he will not leave until he takes his pound of flesh. And I have learned that from bitter experience. So don't let him do it. Don't let him even start. But when the devil comes prowling, you fix your fate, call on Jesus, and the devil will go away. And keep alert. 
Because this is a season when the devil is prowling around looking for someone to, to devour. This is a stressful season that we're in and it promises to be a stressful season for a long time. Even though things are opening up, even though things are coming back, who knows how long it'll be, weeks, months, maybe a year? Till things actually come back and life gets back to something like normal again. This is a stressful season and it promises to be for a long, long time. Stress can bring out the good or the worst in people. Stress can drive people toward God or away from him. And so in this season of stress, learn to handle it the way Peter tells us to, the way Peter learned the hard way to do, and that is you handle stress with open hands and fixed feet. Cast all of your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. Don't hold that stress by yourself. Don't try to carry that stress by yourself. Take it out of your hands and put it into him, into his. Trust God because he cares for you. Open hands toward God and fixed feet against the devil. When the devil comes prowling, you stand your ground and in Jesus' name tell him to go away and he will run. Cast all of your anxieties upon the Lord because he cares for you. Resist the devil firm in faith and he will flee. That's how we handle stress in this season that is upon us. That's what Peter tells us to do. And if there's anyone who ever had to learn the hard way, surely it's him. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you and we praise you for this day. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you and praise you that your word is alive and that there is always a word spoken to us for every season, even for a season like this. Thank you. And God, we pray. If there is someone here in the sanctuary or at home right now who is burdened with stress and worry and anxiety, God, we pray that you would use this word to speak to that person that they might trust you, that they might turn to you and give you the weight that you can carry it for them and lead them safely through. Father, we pray too, if anyone is under attack by the devil, God, we pray that person would cry out to you, Jesus, and that you would show up and drive the devil away and set that person free. Lord, this is your desire for us, and so we pray it, Jesus, in your name. Amen.